All right, welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. We're doing Engineering Calculus 1. Chapter 0 is things you should already know. Usually they call this an appendix. Section 0 0.4 is going to be the Cartesian plane now. Specifically this lecture, what we're going to do is the description of the Cartesian plane, R2, and then we're going to do the definitions or the derivations of the distance formula and the midpoint formula based on the, knowing the coordinates of the endpoints. Let's do this. All right, so what is the Cartesian plane, R2? Basically, the board is the Cartesian plane. It's after Rene Descartes, uh, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. Same guy. He's wondering whether he exists. He figures maybe I should narrow down where we are in space. So what he does is he creates an x-axis, and then he creates a y-axis perpendicular to that. So all of these are right angles. And then what we're going to do is every point P in the plane is going to be now if you're on just a real number line every point is just a tick or a dot on that real number line now what we're going to do is every point in the plane is going to be associated to an ordered pair the first coordinate is going to be called your x coordinate along the x axis this is where we get the first coordinate and the second coordinate is going to be called your y coordinate and we get it along the y axis those two things together tell you where every point in space is and classically, we call this guy the origin O, which is going to be the point zero, zero. Through the origin, they'll always say, who's that guy? It's the point zero, zero is the origin. Two main things we want in this is if I have two points, if I have another one Q, I want to know, and then I have a line between them, I want to know what the midpoint of that is, and then what the length of that line is, which is going to be the distance between them. Let's do those two things. Application of Pythagoras' theorem. When am I ever going to need Pythagoras' distance formula in two dimensions and higher? Complete the square. Anyways, so now what we're going to have is the distance D specifically we want between two points P and Q in the plane. So the idea here is we want a formula which involves the coordinates of P and the coordinates of Q so that somehow if I'm given points with coordinates A1, B1 and some other point A2, B2 and I have their coordinates, I can find out what the coordinates or what the calculation for the distance is and then what the coordinates of the midpoint. The midpoint will be the next one we do, but that's going to be this guy right here that we're going to look for the point M which is going to be the midpoint M1, M2, and we want to know what the coordinates of those and what the formula of this guy is dependent on these coordinates. That's the whole idea here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem. Cleverly, what we have, first of all, is here's a point willy-nilly in the plane. There's another one. For convenience, I put it in the quadrant one. What we're going to now do with that is connect P and Q with a finite line segment. That finite line segment has a length. That length is called D, and that is, in fact, the distance between P and Q. How are we going to find D? Luckily, we have Pythagoras' theorem, and in this right triangle now, we have this right triangle. Don't be shy, draw the other picture. But now I have, this is D, and this is the absolute value of B minus B2 minus B1. Distance in one dimension, this direction. Distance in this direction is going to be A2 minus A1. And therefore, what am I going to do? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or the sum of the square of the legs in a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. What? This says that d squared is equal to, I'm going to write it in the order, a2 minus a1 squared plus b2 minus b1 squared. And so I can take the positive square root, and that gives me the distance formula d, which in fact we're going to write as the distance between p a1 B1 and Q A2 B2. The distance between those two points with those coordinates is now based on those coordinates given by A2 minus A1 squared plus B2 minus B1 squared. In higher dimensions, you just add more coordinates and do C2 minus C1 squared and then on and on and on to infinity if you'd like to. Buzz Lightyear would infinity and beyond. What's beyond infinity? Larger sizes of infinity. That's a different video. All right, this is the distance formula as a consequence of Pythagoras' theorem. We'll do an example in a second. First, I'll give you the distance formula. Now let's derive the midpoint formula, and then we'll do an example with both. Draw pictures. Draw pictures. All right, for the midpoint formula, again, what we're trying to do is we're going to take a two points, P and Q. We plot them in the plane. We draw a finite line segment between them, PQ. 
then we want to cut it in half basically we want to find the midpoint of that segment and then also what that's going to do is cleverly what we're doing here is dividing it up into a bunch of regions this interval so this we're going to call m1 and we know, want to know what the coordinates of m1 are based on a1 and a2 and then we're going to have m2 and we want to know what the coordinates values of this is based on b1 and b2 so for the horizontal direction what we cleverly know is with that cut these have to be equal distances so those are equal to each other so what we get is m1 minus a1 pretending this absolute value is going to equal a2 minus m1 i'm solving for m1 in terms of the other two so what i want to do is bring this one over and that one over that immediately tells me that 2 m1 is equal to a1 plus a2 and because 2 is positive i can divide both sides and therefore i'm going to get M1. So what that says is M1 is the average of the endpoints, is the midpoint. Same thing if I can't help myself. B2 minus M2 is going to equal M2 minus B1. Solve for M2. That says I'm going to get B1 plus B2 is equal to 2M2. And I'm going to divide and we're going to get M2 is equal to B1 plus B2 over 2. The moral of the story is the midpoint of two points P and Q is equal to what? The coordinates of that are A1 plus A2 over 2, the average of the X coordinates, and B1 plus B2 over 2, the average of the Y coordinates. The midpoint of two points is the average of those endpoints. Let's do an example of distance and midpoint. To finish off, let's do an example, or a couple of them at least. We can draw them all in the same one, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the first one, I. What we're going to do is we're going to find the distance between them, and then we're going to find the midpoint of the segment PQ. First of all, let's draw them. How do we draw them? For P, the first coordinate, X coordinate, is 2, 1, 2. So we're going to be there. And then the Y coordinate is 1 right here. So we're going to come out to there is P. And then Q is going to be 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to come out to here. And that's going to be Q. Then we're going to have a finite line segment between them, P and Q. First of all, what is their distance? The distance between P and Q in the first one is going to be, remember the square root of A2 minus A1 squared plus B2 minus B1 squared. I got a little messy, just hang on. And then what do we want to do with that? Now we have to match in ours. This is A1 and B1, and this is A2 and B2. You want to match with the theory and then put those in there. So what that is going to be is equal to the square root of, what are we going to get? 3 minus 2 squared plus 4 minus 1 squared, which is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 10 approximately equal to pi, but that's neither here nor there. There's the distance between them. This is root 10, which is d. For their midpoint, the midpoint isn't as bad. What we're going to do is m, which is m1, m2. Remember, the midpoint of those guys is going to be a1 plus a2 over 2, comma, b1 plus b2 over 2. Once we fill that in, again, what we're going to do is we're going to write this as 2 plus 3 over 2 comma 1 plus 4 over 2 which is going to be the point 5 over 2 5 over 2. I like 5 over 2 because in its fractional avatar and its decimal avatar you use the same symbols. 5 over 2 is 2.5. Find another number that does that. Uh, I don't know. Anyways that has nothing to do with what we're doing so just scratch that from your brain. I can't but you could possibly what am I doing with that? I'm trying to find the midpoint and what that said was we're going to be at 5 over 2 and 5 over 2 is going to be that midpoint and there's M right there. That's the guy we're finding. This guy. For the other ones now, let's do it in purple. First of all, let's draw the two points. Right now we're going to get 1, 1. That's this point. If that's P this time, then what's Q going to be? Q is 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Ooh. And then we're going to go out to here. So this is going to be Q. And then we're going to join them. And it looks already like it goes through 2, 0. Let's see if it does. What we want, first of all, the midpoint M is going to be 
a1 plus a2 over 2 comma b1 plus b2 over 2. In our case now this is going to be a1 and a2 is going to be 1 plus 3 over 2 comma 1 plus minus 1 over 2 which is the point 2 0 so that is exactly the midpoint 2 0 where the distance the distance again is going to be the square root of the difference of the coordinates this time it'll be 3 minus 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 1 squared which is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8, <coughs> which is 2 root 2. This is the distance, this is the midpoint, this is how we compute them based on the coordinates of the original two points. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell, I'll see you next time.